Hi everyone, welcome to this Rhino and Grasshopper tutorial. My name is David Copetti and in this video I wanted to share with you guys what I was doing with the script. And the idea was to develop a dome design and also at the same time be able to figure out the cost of the construction of just the materials um, by taking the length and dividing it by the cost of materials and all those things. So the first thing I'll do is I'll show you how I did this structure and then I'll show you how I went about decoding how to do the total cost. Um, so I'll share that with you guys and if you have any questions, let me know. So before I even get into the cost, let's go here and I'll show you how I came up with the design. It's a straightforward three different arcs two of them being the same size. So these two, actually this one and this one are going to be the same. And then we have this middle one and that is what we loft together to create that surface. So we can of course change the size of this one. And of course, at the end, I dimensioned each strut so I can know the overall length. And this will help me guide to know uh, if they're getting too long for the diameter of structure of strut that I'm going to be using. So the more we offset, it creates uh, 30 inches more this way and also on the other side. Now. One thing to notice is that this is a symmetrical structure. So this strut and this strut are going to be the same size. And so it's kind of like bilateral symmetry where both the ones on the sides are going to be the same and same this way, right? This one and this one are going to be the same. Same with this one, 30.89, we have this one. So let's go back. We'll change this to 24. And what I did was I took that lofted surface and I subdivided it using grid structure. And this is actually under lunchbox structure. And you need to download this uh, plugin to get this working. There are other ways to get this using isotrim, but this one gives us a quick uh, subdivision. Then I took that curve and I extended, so this is something else. For, to be able to create this connection, we actually need an extra inch and a half to be able to smash the ends and create the perforation for that strut. So that is something that I did here, is I took all those curves and I added an inch and a half on each side. And that is actually what I, used for the overall length. So you'll notice that I took those curves and I put them into the length here. And this length gives me two things. It gives me all, all, all of the overall length and feet. So it's going to add up all of these numbers. And that's what this gave me, 345 feet. So that's all of these numbers added together. The other thing that I did was by using sort list and also delete consecutive, I removed all the redundant ones. And this gives you an idea of how many separate struts and different sizes we have here. So we have 14 different sizes, the short, the smallest one being 26 and the biggest one being 37. And all of these numbers, of course, update when we change some of these numbers. The numbers get bigger or smaller depending on the parameters here. So that's one of the useful things about this is it will calculate the cost of the parametric design here and when we change it it updates it too so let's go back here 
these are all the like i said all the individual struts and their length here we have the number of connections so what i did is i got the points and each of these points is going to determine a connection and that's what i did i did a list length and i flattened the list in the input and this gave me the total number of points that i have here it's going to be under structure nodes so if i go here to a point and i plug in the structure nodes here you'll see those are going to be where the connections are going to be so i'll actually disable preview on this and I shall delete that because we have this one here. Continuing on, now that we have all of the lengths here, so if I go down here, we have every single strut. And what we did is a mass addition. So we're adding together all those struts, and this gave us the total length in feet. What we're doing now is figuring out how long each um, each one of those the length of the strut of the material that we're going to buy so we have 345 feet we're going to buy 10 foot segments and this will give us the number of pipes to buy so we need 34 10 foot segments to create this design and of course there's also going to be some um waste so there will probably be like a percentage allowance for um maybe like three or more struts to account for all the cutoffs that we can't use and then here we multiply by the cost of each strut so if we have 34 struts and each one of those struts cost three dollars and sixty cents this gives me the total cost of this in dollars so it's going to cost 124 dollars to buy 34 of these struts at three dollars and sixty cents so i wanted to figure out and develop a design for my backyard and this is one way i'm trying to figure out what's going to be a way to good way to develop it with good size struts and at the same time um, keeping down material cost so hopefully that was useful it may be a little bit confusing um, it's not typically this was not so much uh, parametric design it was more cost analysis using a parametric design <clears throat> and this is a really simple way of, of doing it uh, for structures like this so like i said if you have any questions make sure to let me know if you have ideas for other videos or questions you have uh, leave them in the comments i sometimes um, have time to get to those and I can create a video kind of explaining it Thank you for watching and I hope to see you next time